numbers. It's good. I'm Wayne. I'm here with my guy Roman. What's going on, bro? Cooling, man. Cooling. We're back here in the LLs today. Episode 24. Kobe Bryant. Rest in peace to the Mamba. Number of episodes. Um, and yeah, we're back here in the Layup Lounge talking about some hottest basketball topics, some of the freshest basketball topics, NBA. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and dive straight into it. Okay, so just kind of looking at an overview of the playoffs right now, um, focus on the Eastern Conference. The Bucks are currently matched up with the Indiana Pacers. Mm -hmm. So just looking at Damian Lillard now and his entire career overview, is this probably like the same equivalent setup he had in Portland now that Giannis isn't on the Bucks? Do you think it is? Is it a better setup here in Milwaukee uh, or is it worse <laughs> in what he had in Portland? <sighs> It's tough, especially now that we're seeing that Chris Middleton might also be out of this next coming game. Mm -hmm. This might be a worse setup than he had in Portland. And when we say worse setup in Portland, we mean like when he was in the playoffs, like, for, you know, scrapped in the playoffs. Those Portland playoff teams, the, this might be a worse setup than them because you got to think about it. Nurkic was solid. They had a solid canter once upon a time. Norman Powell, uh, Robert Cummington before he was washed. Uh, CJ McCollum before he was washed. Uh, so they had a lot of good talent in Portland. Th they just couldn't really bring it together. I think the setup in Milwaukee, though, I think they're just less talented. I think that's just what it is. Like Drake Crowder, uh, Pat Connington. Brooke Lopez is all right, but he don't he don't like passing it to Dame. So I don't know. It's, it's very comparable, I think, but I think the setup in Portland when he was scrapping in the playoffs with those teams, I think those are better playoff teams. And I think Brooke Lopez is probably the best player outside of, if like excluding Giannis, Brooke Lopez might be the next best player that Dame has played with over the past couple of years. Or Chris, even like Chris Middleton. Or Chris Middleton, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, just kind of looking at it from that perspective, it's hard to say that the Portland team is worse because his third best teammate is Brooke Lopez or Chris, Chris Middleton. Middleton. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. But... <laughs> I, I, it's gonna make me sound like a hater. I ain't gonna lie. It's gonna make me sound like a hater, but I gotta ask the question. If KD didn't have those two rings in Golden State, would we be looking at him like we look at Melo? <laughs> and that's no disrespect to Melo. Melo is a great player offensively. Probably, what is he top 10 in scoring? He's top 10 in scoring. He's probably a top 10 bucket getter, just pure hoop. Like he, he can hoop. You know what I'm saying? Like Rucker Park, mm -hmm. Rico Hines. Summit down in New York, you know, that one gym. Every, oh, yeah. No he's open, convinced. unstoppable, hoodie on. He's ready to go. But, I mean, we got to look at it as it is. I mean, he took the less money, or he took the more money, excuse me, to stay in New York where he could have went to go win somewhere else. He chose the money, chose the bag, got to respect it. But at the same time, I mean, the consequences was there. He didn't win a championship. Obviously, Kevin Durant has won two. He hasn't won any since. And, you know, now he has this Phoenix setup. He's been going to all these other super teams. These setups have not been working out. And that's what got me to thinking, like, if he didn't even have those Golden State rings, is he, are we just looking at him like he was a pure hooper, pure scorer, but he's not up there. Like, he shouldn't be in the conversations of the GOAT. Because even though we're not really saying he's, like, up there, there's a bunch of kids out there. People have him a tear above Yeah, they, they, have yeah, above they got him. They, like, he's... Like, th this is the GOAT area right here, and he's, like, outside. For sure. He's, like, yeah. outside the club, basically. You know what I'm saying? The, to some people's eyes. But would he be talked about as Melo if he didn't have those two rings? Without rings, Kevin Durant is the Michael Jordan of Carmelo Anthony's. <laughs> and that's just what it is, bro. He would be the best. He, without rings, he would be the best Carmelo Anthony. You know what I'm saying? So he'd be the best for... He'd be the best scorer, just small forward scorer, strictly scorer, um, hitman for hire. I bounced around the, the different teams a little bit. But he has the MVP, and that's what really helps his case, and that's why I call him the Michael Jordan of Carmelo Anthony's, um, because he has the MVP. He was able to... He won the most valuable player. He was the best player in the league at one point. Um... And he shouted, shouted his mom's uh, <laughs> the speech. Right. So, but nah, he would be the Michael Jordan of Carmelo Anthony's if he didn't have rings. I think he'd be, I somewhat agree, but also I think he just, his legacy would be torn to shreds if he's never won a championship and he was moving the way he was moving. Like, if he went to OKC, didn't work out, you lost to Golden State, you go to their team, Say they don't win a championship while he was there. Then you go to Brooklyn and you're like, you know what? Let me try something here. Doesn't work out. You're in Phoenix right now. It's not working out. I think he he might be even looked at worse than how we look at Melo. I don't think we look at Melo bad, but it's like because he doesn't have the ring, you know, he's never been on that 
he's never been in the goat like pedestal you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like he's never been looked like never never been looked as such you know as one of those top greats um but i think he'd be he look way worse than mellow just because mellow at least mellow he stayed at a place for a significant amount of time he stayed in denver they traded him to new york mm -hmm. I mean, he started to bounce around after that, but that wasn't really his fault. That's when the Leafs were starting to hate on him. That wasn't because he wanted to leave, because he wanted to be in OKC. He wanted to work that out. It's not like he asked for... I don't think he asked for out in that situation. I think they just wanted to get rid of him. Oklahoma, the, Houston. The Houston situation was terrible. Atlanta, LA. He was in Atlanta for like a week. Atlanta. <laughs> I think even... I think his third best team he was on was probably Portland. Crazy. That's nuts, right? Yeah, that's but crazy. I mean, we, you know, and shout out to Portland. They was embracing him. He felt comfortable there. He had a good role there too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. Come off the bench, Melo, like he should have did back in OKC. He learned it. You know, he learned. But as far as Kevin Durant, I think he would be on that. He he might be even in a tier below just for that fact. If <laughs> if he was, you know, if he never won a championship. Fortunately for him, he won one. He he won, in, you know, you got to get a diamond tester to check those ones out. Those crazy. Fugazi rings. That's crazy. Those, those rings are Fugazi. I know he was the best player on that team, but, like, that's literally the greatest team of all time. Like, what the gravitational pull <laughs> for that Steph had. See, okay, so Steph and Dame, you know, they got the same pull, but then you got Kevin Durant on one side. You got a prime clay on the other side. It's not looking good. All right, yes. like, what? But anyways, and speaking and speaking of third options, it's just like who's the best third option in the league right now? Hmm. <laughs> my off the top of my head, I think the best third option, and you might call me crazy for this. I'm gonna say Jaden McDaniels. I feel he's the like best third option in the league. He's a best two-way player third option because he's going to pick up your best perimeter player and he can also give us the 25. He can also give us 30. He can he there's a lot of there's no limitations to his he, game. The, the so I'm saying uh, if our big two of Ant-Man, Cat and I mean even Rudy, if you want to consider him part of that big two or like he's not even a third option necessarily. So that's what I'm saying it makes it so okay. much easier for Jaden to kind of slide in there as like that third glue piece pick up your best perimeter guy, and score you 30 points. Like, he just won the Minnesota Timberwolves a playoff game. So, I'm going to say, that's just like a, I'm going to say Jay McDaniels. Jay McDaniels, I'd probably take, I mean, see, this dude ain't healthy, but I'd probably take Chris Middleton. Hmm. I'm taking Chris Middleton before Jay McDaniels. I mean, he can get you a bucket. He's not a slouch on defense. He got the championship experience, so he's he, he's a seasoned vet. You don't have to go into games wondering if he's going to show up on the offensive end or not. I feel like Jay McDaniels is not consistent yet. You're I think getting the defense get... every night, though. I mean, you're getting elite. Absolutely. Elite defense. But then you're getting eight points. You know what I'm saying? So I, I need more than that if you're going to be my third okay. option. I mean, like you said, if you, you're talking about him like he's a two-way player, I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. I think that – him, that last playoff game that he just had when he scored 25, I think that those are – he's getting open looks. And it's because the floor is being open now that, you know, you got to guard Ant Edwards. There's there's two bodies sent at him at all costs. And then you got Cat on the floor. So you better thrive in that situation. You got two of the best offensive players in the league. So, of course, he's going to thrive in that situation. But and, I think that – Yeah, he is. I mean, that's, that's Yeah, is. but also they don't – you know, they're not say, respecting him on the offensive end yet. The other one I was going to say, this might be kind of just – of the minute, though, but I like Trey Murphy. Same sort of deal, though. I mean, he now that Zion's out, he's kind of stepped up a little bit, increased his offensive production. They about to get swept. He's been and he ain't do. I don't. I don't know. I think he had a bad game last game. They was getting. No, they clapped. got. They got. They got toasted. They got clapped. But I, no, I, I like the way he's. I've always liked his game, and even towards this last stretch end of the season, I think he's kind of stepped up a little bit. More. I can't wait till the off season because Zion need to get out of there. It's done. It's toast. Mm -hmm. I mean. You gotta. I feel like that team should still be in this series, regardless. But like I said, CJ McCollum, like, what are we doing? Why are you putting a thirty-five-year-old around Zion? <laughs> what are we doing? Ho Jose Alvarado. He's a he's a winning player. Jose Alvarado. That's a, a stretch. No, what, what is he won? He's a start. He's my he starting point guard. You want a playing game? That's my starting point guard on a championship. He's not even better than Pat Bev. He's on the same tier as Pat Bev. They do no, the same thing. No, I don't thing. think yes. so. They do the same He's thing. He's not going to have a 10-year career. Yes, he will. 
No, you won't. I guarantee. Well, he's already what three in? Is he? I think he's like two in. He's, this is the third. This, this is, is third. third. This is okay, third. This yeah. Is third. Yeah. No, he's bro. He's gonna be a, a tenured vet. Hell no. Three and D. And intangibles. They're going to look at him like IT at some point. Like, oh, he's 5'9", can't play defense. You seen that the Suns were like, or some people are saying that the Suns should start IT and bring Brad off the bench. Like, what are we doing? That's just click. Bro, that's for the click. You think it's for the click? I seen that. I was like, bro. Who said that, too? I swear. Lou Will. Lou Will. I was like, bro. And and then Chandler Parsons agreed. Really? Yeah. They're, they think it's the IT of 2016, 2018. They think well, it's Well, because, you know, IT, and we love IT on this show, but, you know, he always preaches how healthy he is now. He always, I mean, bro, you're 35, bro. You're 35. You had a, you're like, come on, man. I mean, uh, it's. So we'll just kind of uh, talk about six man votes real quick. Nas Reed won six man of the year. He lost to Malik Monk, or excuse me, he beat out Malik Monk by about three votes, three first There's place two. votes. Two. Two. Um, so I just want to ask you. You can't go wrong with either one of them. You can. Who are you taking as your you six can. man? You can. Malik Monk should have won. You can go wrong. When you're leading in points, assists, you came off the bench like 13 more games than the dude that just won. Nas Reed was starting a lot. Cat has been out. What are we doing? That's the sixth man of the year. Like what? Like what? Points, assists, minutes off the bench? Okay, like, bro. come on, dude. What about Aura, though? Nas Reed come off the bench, bro. Aura? And there's no Aura. Aura that we there's got... no six-man Aura in the league like Nas Reed. No, bro. no, He get no. the towel night. He get the fans involved. He get the ball at the top shout of the key. Shout out to He starts Timberwolves. spinning. No, no, He no, starts no, cleaning. No, shout out to he the Timberwolves. The, bro. You know who won this Nas award Nas Reed. For him? He didn't. No. The Timberwolves PR team won this award for him. They, that, they, they knew what they were doing. They did. Because if they were because if they're riding for Malik the way that Minnesota was doing that for Nas, I think that Malik would have won it. And I don't want to hear talking about he got injured. That two weeks, two weeks left in the season before going in, no, I don't that think don't, that, that should that shouldn't have that mattered. That don't matter. That shouldn't have mattered. I'm pretty sure votes were probably in by then. Like, there's no way, bro. Like, he should have won the award. You li- and I mean, seeding, I get. Are we counting winning when we're talking about six man of the year? Why does winning matter when it comes to the six man of the year? It's not the MVP award. It's not the like same award. Like you said, he had to step up and fill the it's role. It's not the starter. same award. Okay, so in that case, then Chet should be the rookie of the year. Chet should be the rookie of the year, right? He's on the first. They're not. No. Ju- they didn't just make the playoffs. They're first seed. It doesn't work like that. Yes, it, no, because when why is winning Wemby matter? Clears for, Chet. So why does winning matter in six man? But it, it, you know, like why is it? matter in different awards like that doesn't make sense to me i know i never said it matters more for the six man oh okay well i thought you were saying that because the wolves won more than not that no, helped no out. no i'm just saying oh. that it makes it look better though shoot if you're like you well, okay but you're kind of saying it now it makes it look better no X, no i'm not saying that that should affect it i don't like have the complete like reason for it but no it makes it look better if you're the first seed because minnesota's top two is better than actually miles ahead of Sacramento's top two. Facts. That's very true. And Carl Anthony, I'm taking Carl over no, very, Sabonis. Yes. I mean, I don't double double. I don't care. Ant Man. Yeah. yeah. No. Nah, so what are we? What are we really doing? Nah. M- but Malik Monk should have won the award. He got hoed. Okay, but the aura of Nas Reed cool. though. This is the year of the Timberwolf. The this aura. Is the, this is the. It's the aura. We're doing aura now. It's the aura. We get, they I'm giving got, them aura points. I think they do got aura. They're, they're sponsored by aura. Like, I think that's the company. That's I mean, that's fire. Yeah, know. But nah, bro, what do you mean? You, there's more highlight factor with Malik Monk, too. That's debatable. That's not debatable. You, you, but like I said before, Nas okay, Reed. That's because you like dunks. Bro, Nas, Nas Reed, Reed no. will tween, tween behind, bro, it, spin. Bro, <laughs> the only the reason why. stand up. Bro, they, the crowd Jelly. is standing. Jelly fam. No, he's the crowd is fam. standing up because he's built like. <laughs> <laughs> his build he, he no, looks like he's not supposed to do that okay but give him look, look, come here no Malik Monk just dunk and everybody go crazy that's basic so because Nas, Nas Reed will get the ball so because three, Nas Reed hoops flat footed we should give him the award pound dribble <laughs> it's because he hoops flat footed oh no, see you're very sleep he plays like I'm a wing very sleep Yes, you're very sleepy. You gotta go watch some Nas Reed highlights. Bo, is he bro is he really the best six the best player to come off the bench was Nas Reed Yes. <laughs> yes. What? I'm not even sure he was better than Norman Powell. Norman Powell got, he got hoed, hoed for even not even being a finalist. No, no, he got hoed for not being a finalist. I was like, that's... He was playing with four Hall of Famers, limited touches, and he didn't even... And he was still averaging like 15 off the bench. Well, Westbrook like, said that he's the best player off the bench. And I think that's debatable, whether you have Westbrook or Nas Reed off the bench. 
You're taking West Just for the Osri. Season. Okay, now we're tripping. No. You, that's undebatable? Okay, no. It's not right now. <laughs> it's not at this point. No, it's not. He was cooking. He no. brings that. You're talking about Aura. He brings the energy. He does bring the energy. He just caught a lot from Harden the other night. And I seen it. He brought the and energy. He's yelling. Yeah, he's screaming. I love it. And I love that. Do it every night. You say, you know what? You like Jelly Fam. That's what you like. Okay, you can't. When you say the highlight factor, though, he, bro, he gets the, what is it? The Target Center? Ugh. Ugh. Oh my God! They be like, Nah, it's Reed. Nah, it's Reed. They be going crazy because it there. looks goofy as hell that this big <laughs> ass dude is doing so all these movements. No one can guard him. No one it's can not, him. bro. It just looks better than it is, bro. Like, <laughs> it just like it looks good. We went in. We went in six man based off like looks. Aura, or, like, Aura <laughs> alone. That is ridiculous. Yes. Aura points. That's why he lost two points off the first place. His aura you know, clears. Yes. Uh, yeah, Malik. I don't think he had a haircut all season. <laughs> That's what I'm he go out there ignorant. Just... Real hoop. He's focused on hoop. Nas, you don't get a haircut. Twist. He got the retwist. You see what Kevin Durant's looking like? We were gonna talk about that. That's vicious work. He got the. That's vicious work up top. Kevin Durant's hair or LeBron's hair? LeBron. Who are you taking? Oh, uh, LeBron's hairline is. At its, at its lowest peak, <laughs> I'm still taking Braun, bro. You and really? that's why I'm surprised that KD doesn't get as much flack. Like, it gets flack, but it never got as much flack as LeBron did. he's not one of the GOATs. Exactly. See, when you're one of the GOATs, you get, fl- you get more bro, hate. They, they hated on LeBron so much, he got the install. Like, he had to go he had to go to, what was it, Turkey and get the hair installed? And you know what's crazy is no one's talking about that. It looks good. Like, no, the hair install looks smooth. He KD, a- you need to do the same, bro, because now it's, he, they said he got the, what's it called? The, um... When you look inside of a bit or inside of a girl's tummy when she's pregnant, the um not the ultrasound. The, she got the ultrasound haircut. Oh, uh, <laughs> I said that's crazy. They need to go around. You know how they go around do the diamond the diamond testers. They need to go on <laughs> the hair be the like hairline tester because no one even better the eye. He just came back no headband. That's when we should have known. Something's not. Hey, it's that's what we should. That's what we should have known. He's but no. At one point it was looking rough. Miami has started getting nasty. Like you stressed out, bro. Stressed. He lost to Dirt. He, he was, was stressed. stressed. He was stressed. Miami was bad news. And they said he was doing steroids. That's another conversation. <laughs> yeah, that's that's conspiracy. On. How are you the clutchest player in the league and don't make the playoffs? Steph said he's clutchest? They, he just won the clutch player of the year. Isn't it like most cl- clutch points scored or what? I don't yeah, know. most clutch points and assist. Okay, so how come Malik Monk didn't win uh, six man of the year? He had the most. He led in every category. We should layup lounge should get a vote. We should, layup, get a vote. Layup, no, we should each get a media vote. There's no way Nasri wins that award. Like, there's no way that should have even happened. <laughs> there's no way that, they're rewarding winning at that point. I feel like if Sack was up, come on, yeah. So at the end of game two, Anthony Davis, um, Jamal Murray hit a step back on him, won the game for the Nuggets. Oh yeah. Anthony Davis, so post game, said he got kind of got frustrated. Somebody asked him the question, "What happened on the last play?" And Anthony Davis was just like, "Jamal Murray hit a shot." And he threw the mic down. Yeah, that's a good impression. Yeah. <laughs> he, he <was laughs> that sounds just like him. Yeah, he was pissed. <laughs> um, what's one of the most memorable media moments you could think of? We're like, what's your favorite? What's the funniest one? I mean, I don't know. I don't know if anything crazy. I remember when Dame was in the bubble. He said, "I, I didn't come here to waste my time." <laughs> he was about business. He stepped into the bubble. Um. I like the Shaq one when they, they said, he said, if your if your mom got bit with the snake, uh, the snake right in the chest area, would you suck the venom out to win a championship? <laughs> That's a crazy question. That's crazy. It's a cra- you know, and obviously, you know, Westbrook. So what? Trip. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? So I mean, there's so many crazy moments. I mean, for, nah. I mean, I think. Uh, Kobe, obviously, he got a couple iconic ones. Yeah. The job's not finished. That, that one's probably the one. I mean, I hate what. I hate and what everybody want to quote it now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. job's not finished. Yeah. Like, like, what are we doing? What are we here to celebrate? Allen Iversons practice, not a game. We talking about practice for sure. And then, you know, this is football, but Marshawn, I'm just yeah, here so I won't get fined. I just thought about another question real quick. You know, I I know you just copped the the a the a e ones. Is that the best debut shoe since Michael Jordan? Is that the is that the best first shoe since Michael Jordan? There's been a lot of shoes, um, or there's been a lot of players that have had like their debut shoe, and I think, or since I'm trying to think, his I, 
it helps him a lot that his debut season is kind of happening, or excuse me, that his shoe's coming out right now. That his breakout this, season. Yeah, that his breakout season's happening yeah. in tandem with his shoe like rolling right now. Um, because this is what, his fourth year? And the fact that he just yeah. get, he's just now getting his shoe in his first like real deal playoff run, it's like on court in front of everybody's eyes. Like it's the hottest shoe on the market. You and can't he's even playing well. He's playing well. You can't even go to the store and buy that shoe. Like you can't go to the store and just get a pair of Ant Man's. You, you have to like a cup a size bigger. Yeah, you got to. I had to go up a size. Like <laughs> it was the best available. So I, I mean, it's it's tough out here. So I feel like that helps his legacy a lot, or the shoe's legacy a lot. That the fact that it's came out at this point in his career. It's hard for me to just crown it like the best debut sneaker, though. You know what I'm saying? Since the one, because that's just that's the shoe. I, I mean, mean, that's the shoe. But that I shoe mean, transcended that's sports. That's what I said. Since the one, though, since the Jordan one, that's yeah. why I, that had to be the question. But I'm saying that's the most iconic one. I'm tr- who? I mean, because even Kyrie? LeBron, because even LeBron's debut shoe wasn't a signature shoe. It was like the Air's Nike Zoom. The Zoom. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Zoom. I mean, Kyrie's were the Kyrie one. I feel like that's one of the most. That's one of the most iconic. That's the last shoe I remember that had this sort of attention on it. I feel like PGs had that. Okay, no, true. The, the PG ones. PG ones. PG, PG ones, ones are crazy. They need retro those. I'm, the Kyrie ones, though. I remember those had like this. Everybody was trying to get the Kyrie ones. The mm-hmm. Kyrie line in general. I think this is the best debut shoe ever since uh, Michael Jordan. Just because you think about. First of all, it's a nice shoe, right? You know. Yeah, that's no, a good for shoe sure. to hoop in. I don't. I don't got them, so I don't know. You got them. I'd say design wise or. Shoe wise, it's a good shoe. Like you can definitely feel like the the grip is up to standards. Yeah. Um, I think the main thing about it though is like the design, like mm-hmm. the looks of it. It doesn't look like any other shoe on the market. Like you see that shoe and you know it's the Ant Man. Like that's yeah. part of the appeal of it. Yeah. So yeah, I was about to say like that's what Nike is losing right there. I feel like all these other shoes are looking the same. Um, and yeah, I really think that they need to get in their bag because Adidas. I don't think Adidas has ever been up this much. I don't even think they've ever been neck and neck with Nike like this ever. You know what I'm saying? Like they're above Nike. I, I think they're above Nike right now. Mm. They're above Nike for sure. Um, shoe wise, at the very least. You know what I'm saying? So I think that the rollout, you know, the commercials and stuff, they're not even doing that for any other Adidas athlete. They're doing that strictly for him. He's rolling on the court right now, cooking Kevin Durant. And it's like, look what shoes he's wearing, cooking him in. I want to buy him. You know what I'm saying? He just released, uh, he just showed out the lows. And even on top of that, the Booker. Like, you know what I'm saying? Booker's out there getting cooked by the AE1. I'm like, bro, right. this I'm is not, bad for Nike's uh, business. That's what I'm saying. This I don't want no bad books. for Nike's I, I don't business. Want, I don't want no books. We don't want no books now. Yeah. Book and the, the KD17 and the Book 1 is out there getting cooked by the Ant-Man 1. Books I'm going to get hooping. those. Yeah, he's out there hooping in Air Force 1s. Those are crazy. So, no, if you really look at Nike's current lineup, they got the LeBron 21. They got the KD-17, the, the Booker KD, one. See, the KD-17s KD are nasty, though. Nasty they look like work. Air Maxes. What, the Sabrina one? That's yeah. like, Is that like their top four, you think? Yeah. No, the Sabrinas. And I got the Sabrinas. The Sabrinas are nice. Sabrinas so, are nice? Yeah, they're nice. I mean, they, they, you know, they look like Kobe's. So, you know, like I said, I feel like all these other shoes, like the Jaws, I don't really like the Jaws that much. All those low-top shoes, they're all looking the same. I mean, D-Book is kind of different, but, I mean, they look like, they look like a nice casual shoe, though. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode of the LL. Make sure you like and subscribe. We just hit we just hit 360. 360 deal. 360 ways. We're looking for the deal. We need the deal. <laughs> we need we need the deal. More content coming soon. Just know we're working in the background. Um, for sure. Whole new set. I mean, yeah. We're, we're trying to upgrade everything. Everything. All so, the way up. Just know that we're working, though. Um... Stay tuned with us. Like and subscribe. Keep doing your due diligence. Y'all, because y'all doing it. We're, we're pushing 400. Pushing for 400. Um, and no, we're just building the community, man. So keep showing love. Keep dropping them comments. Um, hated the love of the underdogs on top. And I'm going to shot. Okay, then. <laughs> Ronnie James. First round pick. Zach Eady. First round pick. Episode 24, Lab Lounge. Dunzo. Yeah, we out. Come on. Dang, DeMar was first and fourth quarter points, fourth quarter free throws.